said and done today that will be uh, helpful, encouraging, and build us up that we might be a people that will walk by faith and know that God is in control. And I tell you, he is in control. He knows. He knows all about us. And uh, I just love the Lord. Don't care who knows. I just love him. Appreciate him so very much. And I know that you are here. You love the Lord. And uh, you're thankful for what God has done. And there are so many things that's going on across our country, our nation. And uh, if ever a time we need to pray and call on the name of the Lord, that time is certainly right now. Amen. So we're going to uh, go ahead and uh, we're going to uh, get started. We're just uh, going to believe God today uh, for a great time and uh, pray that his uh, power will just fall in this place. I want us to uh, continue to remember all of those uh, that uh, on our sick list uh, had a chance to chat with uh, Sister Lowe just a little bit ago and uh, want to continue to pray and keep her lifted up. My uh, friend, Reverend uh, Theodos Brown, has been going through uh, some medical issues for the last couple of weeks, almost three weeks now. And so we want to lift him up uh, before the Lord and just uh, we know that God is able to do great and mighty uh, miracles. Amen, amen. I'm so glad to see one of our very own here today, uh, Brother Tabalas. Amen, amen. I mean, that's a, that's a blessing, isn't it? Amen, amen. I appreciate him so much. Uh, the last time I got a chance to hear him preach was down at the uh, St. Thomas Church, and uh, he just did a masterful job. And uh, I, I appreciate his, uh, uh, you know, study and his uh, willing to allow God to use him. Amen. So I want to pray uh, that uh, God will move in a mighty way. And so since he's here, since he's here, he looks like he probably needs to pray, and he looks like he needs to read a scripture. So I'm going to ask him to come and lead us in a, uh, a devotional, and then we'll move on from there. Thank you so much uh, for being here today. Amen. Good morning to everyone. Amen. Good morning. Look like I need to read the scripture. And pray. Yes, sir. Lord, have mercy. Tell the Lord thank you. Yes. Thank God for this opportunity to be um, here this morning. So let me go and do what God uh, has already predestined for me to do. Um, I will, we will go to a familiar passage and and real simple John 3:16 All right and it it has so much substance that sometimes we overlook it but it says but God so loved the world so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life Thank you to, to the hearers of his word now we go to God in prayer God, we thank you so much for being God and God all by yourself, Lord. Lord, we know that you have blessed us be in spite of and not because of, Lord. As we go into this new year and new season of our lives, Lord, we're going to lean and depend on you, Lord. We're going to give you all the power and the glory. Lord, there's people that are in the in sick beds and convalescent homes lord we ask you to be the healer that we know that we know you are and whatever way it chooses to be we got to realize your will is not always our way but you are always in control lord god we thank you for what you're going to do for us and for the saint mark uh family thank you to ask you to keep your loving arms and protection around pastor cross as he leads and guide us and realize that your word said in all our ways acknowledge you and you will direct our path God, this year and, and for our lives, we want to just live by that creed, Lord, that 
as long as we acknowledge you, you will direct our path. We will be willing followers as you lead us, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We love you. And we adore you, Lord. And we praise you, Lord. Ask you to walk into this worship experience today, Lord, and 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 bring down your Shekinah glory on us, yes, Lord. Yes, yes. That, that we will praise you like we've never praised you Hallelujah. before because you're doing Hallelujah. things like you've never done before. And we walk away from this worship experience and for the rest of this week that we won't just be better hearers, but we'll be better doers of your most righteous will. This prayer is in your son, darling son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Tavalos. Let us continue to bless and uh, pray for one another and keep everyone lifted up before uh, the Lord. I'm going to ask uh, Brother Tim here in just a minute to uh, give us uh, a, a musical. Uh, and uh, we, But let me make two or three observations, two or three, maybe four, some observations. Uh, thank you so much. And I, I just really want to uh, say that uh, for those of you who have been uh, with us on the, the Zoom, on the Facebook, uh, all of those things, uh, those things have been uh, most helpful. And uh, as you know, we have uh, been doing our Sunday school uh, class uh, on Sunday evenings, Sunday evenings at uh, 3.30. Amen. And so I'm just praying to God, and I'm believing God, and uh, I'm asking you that uh, we will uh, make a switch, make a switch. Uh, I just believe that uh, God is able to bring us through more than conquer us. Uh, we have uh, been uh, going through this uh, pandemic thing uh, ever since uh, 22, uh, 21, whenever it started. And, uh, you know, we have not had our in-person Sunday school. But uh, starting next Sunday, starting next Sunday, starting next, can you say that with me? Starting next Sunday. Starting next Sunday. Amen. I would like for us, uh, Brother Superintendent, uh, that we would start our in-person Sunday school back. And uh, we can do that. Uh, starting at uh, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock. And that will give us to about 9.45, uh, 9.45. This is to start off, see how we do. 9.45, we can quit and come on and get ready uh, for our service. We'll still go ahead and stay with the 10 o'clock at this point. We want to just... Uh, try to get it started and see how uh, everything will go. I'm believing that God uh, is giving us a uh, great opportunity uh, to just uh, allow us to trust him and he show himself strong in the midst of our being, in the midst of the church. We, we, uh, we, we, we should not settle uh, for allowing uh, the enemy to have control. Uh, we, we've had to be very careful, and we are careful, and we know that even now uh, we have uh, this COVID, this flu, and all of that. It's still uh, circulating. Amen. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we, we do uh, what we feel like we want to do. And so I'm not trying to criticize or ostracize. I think all of us, we need to be careful and uh, not take things for granted. But uh, let's give more to the Lord, more uh, to the Lord. If we would do that, I certainly would appreciate that. And I do know and believe that God appreciates our faithfulness. And certainly, I know he's appreciates our faithfulness because he rewards us with his faithfulness. The Bible tells us over in Lamentation 3, he says, uh, his mercies are new every morning, every morning. Amen. And great is thou faithfulness. So he is faithful to us, 
and uh, we're going to ask that we will do our part and be faithful unto him. Amen. Let's keep all of our uh, members who are going through uh, with different ailments. Uh, let's keep them lifted up uh, before the Lord. You see on the screen, uh, uh, it's not right there, but it was up there a few minutes ago. Uh, we have a list of people, and we do want to be lifting our people up uh, before uh, the Lord. Amen. We had a funeral service here yesterday, and uh, the Braggs family and uh, the uh, Reed family and all, let's keep all of them uh, lifted before the Lord. Uh, my grandson left here uh, this morning. Uh, around three something and uh, the last I heard uh, he's in Chicago so let's just keep him uh, lifted up and praying for him uh, he's uh, uh, probably another uh, two or three hours he'll be in Washington DC and from there uh, he will be headed to Japan so uh, please uh, keep him lifted up and uh, we are we are just expecting great things uh, to happen for him and to him and in his life. So uh, please continue to uh, uh, pray for him. I, I prayed and I still pray and I do pray and have prayed uh, that God's covering uh, will be upon him. God will keep him safe, uh, sound, and bring him back. Uh, safely and allow him to accomplish uh, whatsoever he is to comp uh, accomplish on this journey. So please remember that. Remember that. Also, uh, I think it's the second Sunday in uh, February. Uh, you will remember uh, we do have an invitation uh, where Dr. Janice McCoy will be doing her first uh, sermon ministry in uh, Little Rock at uh, Quinn's Chapel. Uh, we do, uh, I hope will, some of us will, as many of us who can, let's go over and support her. She's, uh, she's been with the St. Mark Baptist Church for quite a number of years and uh, has been faithful to this church. And so let us go and uh, give our support and uh, let her know that we appreciate her, we love her, and uh, those of us who can, uh, please let us uh, do that. Thank you so much. We will have our Sunday school this evening at the regular time. But starting next Sunday, we'll do it in person. So please uh, work with us on that. I would appreciate it uh, so, so very, very uh, much. Thank all of you uh, for being here on next Sunday. I uh, encourage you to come. Uh, we will have a uh, guest speaker who will come. It's not uh, a special thing. It is a special thing, but it's not a, a special day or anything like that. But uh, Reverend Tommy Howard, who uh, pastored this uh, church for a number of years, he's going to come and he's going to share with us uh, on next week. So please come. Let us uh, be praying for him and praying with him and uh, keep him lifted before uh, the Lord. <clears throat> he's, uh, I think he's doing uh, pretty well. He's having some health issues, but uh, let's, let's keep him lifted up uh, before the Lord. Amen. We know God is good. God is good, and he is greatly, greatly to be praised. Amen. 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 Thank you. Brother Tavalos, God bless you. Thank you for prayer and uh, scripture. And uh, we're going to get, get more involved. We're going to have our, uh, get more out of our deacons than we've got in the last couple of years, too. So uh, we, we're going to, and, and you know, the truth of the matter is when we talked about going back to the normal, uh, we may never go back to, quote, the normal. And some things, uh, you know, we don't necessarily need to go back to. We need to improve upon. Amen? And so uh, we're going to be looking forward to that. We'll be getting together, and uh, we'll be 
uh, setting the date for a business meeting where we can discuss some things. So you all be praying for us, all right? Amen, amen, amen. And uh, to our Facebook listeners, you who are here, if you on the, uh, Facebook, if you want to come and be with us in person on Sunday school, we certainly would appreciate you coming. And uh, you want to be in person, uh, come in here at our uh, worship time. We certainly would appreciate you. Amen. Now, I don't usually take this much time on any kind of business stuff, especially when we're doing it, uh, going live and doing it. But uh, every once in a while, we have to do what we have to do. Amen. God bless you and God keep you uh, is our uh, prayer. Amen. Amen. Let's just bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you if you don't mind, somebody just 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 begin. Just praise God. Just just thank him. Clap your hands. Tell the Lord thank you. Just tell him thank you. Amen. We need to just thank him. God has been good to us. He's brought us not only a mighty long ways, but God has brought us all the way. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, God. We thank you right now. We thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, bless him in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Well, Sister Crosby is here. She can come and uh, share with us uh, in music, and uh, we'll be ready for the word. I promise not to hold you too long. I don't know what you call too long, but I promise not to hold you too long as far as my estimation is concerned. Amen? Amen. But I, I do want to share a word today. God bless and God keep us is our prayer. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. It's another day's journey, and I'm glad about it. I'm so glad to be here. Amen. Glad to see all of you here. Truly, our God is a healing God. He's a blessing God. He's just a great God. And we can, we can just trust in him, and we can call on him for whatever we might need. Amen? Mm -hmm. Whatever you're going through. Oh, glory. Glory. Hold on. Don't give up don't you worry you don't have to cry for he he sees what you're going through yes. Oh, oh yes. yes he does my god is willing i know he's
Lord, my Lord. My God can see what you can't see. So step, step aside. Let go. Say thank you, Lord. You've been good to me. Just step aside. Thank you, Lord. Many of us know he's in control. Amen, amen, amen. God bless. God keep you. Yes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we do come in your presence. Our heads are bowed, our hearts are humble before you. We lift up holy hands to you. We lift up to you voices of praise. We worship you, God. We know that you are able. You have been so good. You brought us through a many seen and unseen dangers, not because of our goodness, not because we've kept your commandments so well, but because of your loving kindness, multitude of your tender mercies. We said, thank you, sir. We said, thank you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we bless thee in Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Bless the Lord. Isn't the Lord good? Amen, amen. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank everyone who has uh, participated and uh, shared with us uh, here today. God bless you. Uh, I want you to turn with me to the 12th chapter of the book of Acts, 12th chapter of the book of Acts, amen. I want you to uh, pray for me, pray with me, amen. I don't know if my wife pushed me this morning or what, but uh, I got a little catch in my gill loan, so uh, I don't know where that come from. <laughs> What's that, Rebel? <laughs> oh Lord Amen Well You know As you start aging a little bit You find out there are things That hurt uh, That uh, you didn't even know was there Amen 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 Good to see Pastor Jones Thank you Thank you Thank you Amen Pastor Jones I need the uh, I need to get uh, Mr. Uh, Watkins' number before you leave today. I had said things when it's on my mind because when you get older, <laughs> you forget things. <laughs> Amen. I've tried to call him, but the number I have not seemingly not a good number. Amen. So the 12th chapter of the Acts of the Apostle. I think I want to read probably the first four, maybe five verses. Pray for me. Amen. Amen. This is a uh, great lesson, great lesson, I think. We began reading that verse one. And now about that time, Herod, the king, stretched out his hand to harass some of the church. 
Then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now, it was during the days of unleavened bread. So, he had arrested him and put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him intending to bring him before the people after Passover. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Uh, I just want to talk about it is possible that people who seek to do you harm, it is possible they can wait too late because God is in charge. He, he's in charge. Amen. And I like that about the Lord. Amen. There are people who have intentions to do us harm. They intend to do evil and meanness. And of course, we know that uh, this Herod uh, was a man who was uh, evil. And uh, there were several Herods in the uh, uh, Bible. And, uh, you know, there was Herod Agrippa, Herod, uh, the first Herod, uh, it was, it's like they used to say a Herod here and a Herod there and a Herod everywhere. And, and, uh, and uh, some say that uh, uh, with Herod the Great and Agrippa and all of these, uh, some of those guys were so mean and so evil that you would be better off uh, to be one of their animals than to really be a living person. They were mean. They were just rude. They were evil. And here's this one who has put, uh, put one of the uh, believers to death. It says that, uh, and he, uh, and bec it, well, says that he stretched forth his hand to harass some of the church. Then he killed James. He killed James, the brother of John. Uh, it doesn't tell us why he killed James, the brother of John. And the truth of the matter is, with their mentality and the way they were, they really didn't have to have a real reason. And you wonder sometimes, we get mistreated in life, and you wonder, what have I done? There are some people who are just bent on doing you harm. Wow. So here, James has been put to death. The brother of John, these brothers who were named the sons of thunder. These are the brothers whose mother came and asked Jesus to allow her sons, one to sit on the right and the other on the left. And Jesus asked the question, are you able to drink of the cup that I drink. And you have to be careful about trying to be quick on the draw to answer certain questions. Because every now and then, the question you answer, you think it is something so unique and in your favor 
and will help to push forth your bravery. And so those boys says, we are. And little did they know, listen to Jesus, and you will. And you will. Drink of the cup that I drink of. What was in the cup? You, you, you do remember, you do remember, it was Jesus himself who prayed and said, Father, if thou be willing, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. Unlike Jesus, John and James had no idea what was in the cup, but Jesus knew. And it was not that Jesus did not come to do the will of his father. He came to do the will of him who sent him. He knew what was in the cup. Death was in the cup. And I think that human side of us, and remember, there was never a time Jesus was on earth, there was never a time that he was not fully God and never a time that he was not fully man. He was the real God man. We, we, said, we said, that's a real God man now. We might be a man of God. But the real God-man is Jesus. He's the God-man who, who came to do the will of him who sent him. And here Peter is at this juncture in life after Jesus had been crucified, nailed to the cross, died on Calvary and witnessed seeing him raised from the dead and hearing him speak on that mount given a command, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've committed. You know, it's amazing to me that the disciples, they wanted to know when Jesus was going to restore the kingdom. And Jesus said, it's not for you to know. That is in the hand of my father. Jesus, who went to Calvary, nailed to the cross, spirit in the side, Nails in his feet, a crown of thorns crushed down in his brow. He died. But he rose again. He rose again. And now he's going back to his father. And look at him. He's back with the Father. And he promised his disciples, Lo, I am with you even to the end of the world. I think it's important for us to understand whenever the Lord gives a promise, he never, I said never, makes a promise that he cannot keep. Nor does he make a promise that he will not keep. If he said, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world, that's exactly what he meant. 
And someone would ask the question, where was he when James needed him? I mean, after all, James apparently died and was killed without a just cause. Where was Jesus? So many times in life we go through struggles and we go through particular situations and we find ourselves and we, we, we ask the question, God, you promised to be with me. You told me you would never leave me. You would never leave me alone. And now my back is up against the wall. Where are you? Every now and then, find ourselves questioning the authenticity of our Lord and our Savior. He said it, I believe it. Now my back is against the wall. What you gonna do? And James is killed by Herod. He's, he's killed. He's dead. The brother of John. He's dead. And guess what Herod's doing? Walking around with his chest stuck out. And there were those who were pleased. There were those who were bragging on him and giving him his props because he had killed James. And I like to think in my mind, Herod thought within himself, if I can get this many props over James, what kind of props will I get if I put Peter to death? <sighs> oh my God, help us, Jesus. And he saw it please the people. And so he stretched forth his hand, and now he grabs hold to Peter. I mean, that, that, that disciple, uh, I, I, I just, I just, I just uh, imagine, Brother Doug, I, I just imagine, you know, they, of course, they didn't have no 357 Magnums back then. They, 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 they didn't have all that stuff. But I just, I just believe Peter never took a text without having that knife on him. <laughs> and it appears he was good with it. Because while they were in the garden, here's a man in the garden, and he is so swift, so fast, and so accurate, he cuts a man's ear off. And Jesus says, put that up, put that up. If you live by the sword, you will die by the sword. Now, wait a minute. This, this is really not making any sense to me. You told me to put up my sword. And now Herod has arrested me and put me in prison. His intention is not just to have me in prison. His intention is to do what he did to James. He wants to put me to death. God, where are you? What's, what's up with this? I've tried. I've tried to serve you. I've tried to worship you. I've tried to do what you, I know I put my foot in my mouth time and time again, but I need some help. And every now and then, when we need help the most, every now and then, Jesus allows us to go through something just to teach us that he can move quicker that in a hurry and bring us out all the way. 
matter of fact, right under the nose of your enemies. I mean, Herod was expecting to get Peter, put him in prison, and put him before four squadrons, squadrons of soldiers. He, he, he didn't need but two to guard him. But four, I, I mean, look. What's up with this? Herod is waiting. And don't we do it? We wait until after church. It's just something we, we don't want to do during church time. Herod says, after Easter. Now, it, it wasn't when they were putting out Easter eggs. No, 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 no. It, it, it wasn't that. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't Easter. Like, it, it, was, it was during the time of the Passover. And it was, it was not lawful to put a man to death doing that time. Well, wait a minute, hold, 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 hold. hold up now. They did it to Jesus. They did it out of the rules of the law. They, 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 they not everybody willing to follow the rule. And we've got folk, I mean, really, when we look at, when we look at uh, the, the laws that I will not no, I won't go into all that, because sometimes the laws are kind of, you know, yeah, yeah, folk, some go this way, they go that way. But, but here's, here's the problem. You can almost see on Herod's face, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. It pleased the folk when I got James. But I'm going to get him. They lead Peter in. Put him in his cell. And take some chains on his hand, etc., and put it on the guards. I have to believe. I have to believe. Now, I don't, I didn't read this in the text. I'm just telling you what I believe. Because I wondered if Herod had killed James. How in the world could Peter just lay up and go to sleep? I mean, you, you know this man mean business. You, you know he, he, his, his thought, I mean, he's probably sleeping right now thinking about how he going to take you out. And you laying up there sleep. What a mighty God. God will let you go to sleep even in the presence of your enemies. David helped us. Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadows of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thou rod and thou staff, they comfort me. Surely, surely, goodness and mercy. Shall follow me all the days of my life. I, I like that. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to hurry and quit now. But, but look at it, 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 look at it. Peter in jail. He's sleeping. James is dead. But the church is praying. You know, when I read, you know, I have problems because I, you know, I read and I have to ask questions. 
Well, why this? Why that? Why did, I mean, why wasn't the church praying when, when he took James out? Or were they praying? They, they, so, you know, they tell me uh, where the Bible is silent, maybe sometimes we just need to be silent. So I'm going to be silent on that. But I will tell you, their number one leader was in jail. And I think they figured this stuff is real. If they did it to James, I know what they're going to do to Peter. And so the church got together and began to pray. I mean, you know, I'll tell you, prayer does change things. Prayer will change situations. Prayer will change you. Prayer will change me. Do, do you hear me? Now, now y'all know, it, it's a lot I don't know. And, and some things I just kind of catch as we go. Uh, you, I, I just think about some amazing things. Uh, what's his name? Ham, Hammond, the the guy that played ball in me. Ham, yeah, him. That's what I'm talking about. Y'all, y'all, y'all remember that? And 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 what happened? As a matter of fact, Reverend Hampton told me they were watching it on TV when it happened. You 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 remember that? And so I heard some, and I said. I'm going to backtrack. I'm going I'm, I'm to look at this. I'm going to look at this. I discovered to Wallace that people came out of the stands on the field and prayed. You know, that big coach has been sued talking about having prayer up in these. Uh, you, you, you understand what I'm saying? This, this ain't no place for prayer. <laughs> well, and from what I understand, I'm no medical doctor. I don't know. But that guy not even supposed to be here. <laughs> He's not even supposed to be here. And they said, he's, he's doing good, but he's still critical. <laughs> they said, he, he's still in bad shape, but he's, he's holding and he's filling the hands. Of his loved ones. <laughs> and so when he, when he finally started coming around, he, he sends it out, and it's on national news. It's on, it's on, it's on, I looked it up. It's on the web. Y'all keep on praying for me. My wife saying that so somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took out the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad my mother prayed for me. I'm so glad my daddy prayed for me. I'm so glad to preach. I'm so glad somebody prayed for me. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ain't supposed to pray in the stands. You ain't supposed to, you, you ain't supposed to have all of that. But somebody says, this man's life is extinct. This man, I mean, we, he's a valuable player. He's a valuable person. 
How many of you know you are valuable to the Lord Jesus Christ? How many of you know that you are valuable to the blood of Christ? You are valuable to the church. You are valuable. Prayer makes me strong. When I'm weak, prayer keeps me marching on. I mean to pray till Jesus come and take his servants home. Pray, saints. I just wonder what, what would really happen. What would have happened when COVID shut the church down? I just wonder what would have happened if the church had come together and said, we're going to pray all over this nation and we're not getting off our knees until we see a change come. A man on his, on, on his, oh, I'm talking about Peter, aren't I? Let, let me just throw this one past, last piece in about. A man on his sickbed and the foundation where he's helping people was like, uh, uh, I think somewhere around $200,000. It done go away up now. I'm talking about but God, but God, God's able. Yeah, I got to close, I got to close. Peter is in jail. He's sleeping. God is in heaven working behind the scene. I got, I'm going to get him. That's Herod's mentality. I'm going to get him. I'm going to take him out. I'm going, I mean, you think, uh, I mean, the people are happy about James. I'm going to take him out. Peter is asleep. And I don't know what the church is, I don't, I don't know what they're really saying. Our leader is in trouble. They've already took one of the saints out. But I just believe some of them are saying, I bet dog gone. If we go sit around here and just let them take another one out without making an effort for them to have some deliverance. Do you know God is able? He is able to bring us out more than God. Brother Doug, you, need, you, 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 and, you and Bill, y'all need to y'all need to sit me down with some time. Help, help me out, because I, I, I have problems trying to figure out some things. I, what, 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 what does it mean, more than a conqueror? If you're a conqueror, I thought you was a conqueror. What, what is more than a conqueror? But God is that kind of God. He's able to bring us out more than a conqueror. Here the man is, he's asleep, he's asleep. He's on his bed, he's asleep. And God, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if it's Gabriel, Raphael, I, I, I don't know who it was, but God dispatches an angel and tell him to go down and wake Peter up. Now, now this is the problem I have. How you go in and wake Peter up? And go completely through the holes. I don't know if they call them a hole. I don't know what they call it. But you, you go completely through all of these other cells and everything. You ain't woke nobody else up. And they got, I mean, you do, do y'all know a guard, if he would lose a prisoner, he would have to lose his own life? I mean, look like somebody ought to be asleep or awake. He, he comes in. He, he, he smokes Peter. Just, just smokes him. Just, you know, Peter, get up. Where, where are you going? Wait a minute. Get your shoes. 
your shoes on. They be kind of cool out there. I don't know. You don't want to catch no cold. I don't know. God, I mean, God done already showed him he can just let him walk on water. But put your shoes on. Get, get girl, girl, your coat around you. And boy, we need to read this Bible. I mean, we need to read this about Bill. Whoever, whoever heard the angel in front, Peter falling behind, and you get to the gate doors. <laughs> Somebody said, and when the gates swing open, he he wasn't walking on in, he was walking on out. I'm gone, y'all. But I'd like to think, if I was Peter, I probably would have said, hey, man, we got to get out of Dodge. We got to get out of here. We got to, I mean, after all, they've already killed James, and now they're getting ready to kill me. It's time for us to get out of here. But they just said, we're going over. To the church house. It, it wasn't the church house. It was somebody else's house. He said, we're going over. We're going to join the prayer meeting. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm telling you, if we are going to be who we ought to be, it's time for us to come on in now and just, just start joining the, the prayer meeting. I don't know what they were saying in church. I don't know what they were saying in Mary's house. I don't know what they were saying in whose house, but whatever they were saying, it seemed to me that the news uh, reached glory. The news reached heaven. They, they were uh, praying, God help my leader. God help my pastor. God help our servant. God we need some help. Yeah, 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 yeah. And every now and then God says, I got you. I, I, I got you. Don't worry about it. I got you. I, everything is all right. God, God, he's in jail. I, everything's all right. He's in jail. I said everything is all right. Well, Peter come walking down. He said, if it's you, just bid me to come on. He said, come on, come on. And he's out there walking. And all of a sudden, he see the, uh, the boasting of the wind. And, and he began to sink and say, Lord, help. Uh, that's all you need. You just say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. And he said, all you got to do is reach out. Reach out and touch his hand. Reach out. And just know that he is there. He is all the way. God, ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? Does anybody here know he's all right? I don't know how you feel about it, but I tell you, God is an all right God. God is an on time God. And then I see Rhoda going to the door, and she hears, uh, doesn't even see him. He just, she just hears the voice. It uh, says, sound like, Peter and uh, then she goes back and tell the people Peter is on the outside. I don't know how you feel about it, but uh, God is a mighty God. God is a powerful God. God is able to bring us out more than a conqueror. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? And every now and then when God is moving in a miraculous way, we begin to think within ourselves, somebody is crazy up in here. Somebody is crazy. You said Peter is out there. The reason we are in here praying is because Peter is locked up in jail. Oh, I don't know how it happened other than the fact we already start praying. But uh, Peter is knocking at the door. Ain't God all right? And uh, he must have wanted to get in the house because uh, he kept on knocking. And finally, somebody else heard him say, yeah, it is Peter. Ain't God all right? Well, I'm gone, y'all. But pray when 
you don't feel like praying. Pray when your back is up against the wall. Pray when the weight of the world is on your shoulder. Pray and know that God is. Won't he do it? Oh, won't he do it? Won't he do it? I know he will. Hallelujah. 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 Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? Oh, glory. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, I just I just want to close with this. My grandson left this morning, almost three o'clock. He went in and said, "See you later, Grandma." And he come out. He had some tears in his eyes. Then my daughter, she got tears in her eyes. My wife was trying to hide them, but she had some too. Me, me and Cardella, we just had a little sweat up out of the eyes. We, we wasn't really crying. We were just, you, you, you know, but, 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 but I, I went back, and when I got in the bed, I said, God, he's in your hand. God, take care of the power. God, take care of the plane. God, keep your hand up on it. God, Keep him safe. And I don't know how you feel about it, but he's in God's hand. Won't God do it? Oh! Oh! Hallelujah. 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 My mama told me when I was a baby, I was in the hospital, and they called and told my mom and daddy, you better get up here, because he ain't going to make it through the night. But I'm telling you, almost 70 years, I'm still here. And why am I here? Somebody pray for me. The doors of the church is open. I led a Christian experience, candidate for baptism. If you are here today and the Spirit of the Lord speaks to your heart, this is a good time to believe it, to trust it, trust and obey. Hallelujah. God is some kind of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've had some good days. We've had some hills to climb. But through it all, God brought us through. Hallelujah. Somebody in this place right now, you know God is good. Somebody in here right now know God is good. I'm thankful. And one of the things I found out about God, I don't always know how to explain it, but God not only make a way, sometimes God just gets in the way. <laughs> He'll get in the way. Hallelujah. that ball player if he had not experienced what he experienced many of us would never know what God can do in a serious situation like this I don't, I don't even understand it but from what I was listening to I, my wife, she was small, but I had to ask her something. What that means?
it's somewhere in between taking breaths. Only God. Only God. I have to believe even while he was there, and just the touch, I don't know if his mom's hand, his dad's hand, his sister, his brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But God is able. God to give us a peace that passes it all understanding. Sometimes we're still waiting, trying to figure out when God is going to do it. God saying it's already done. Get up and start walking. Who gonna open the door? God said, I didn't ask you nothing about a door. I said, get up and start walking. Reverend Frank Newbin had a word back years ago, dear years ago. <coughs> Frank Newbin says, if God tell you to walk through the hole in that wall, just get up and start walking. Somebody said, the problem is, Reverend, ain't no hole in the wall. He said, I said, if God says, walk through that hole in the wall, it's your job to start walking. It's God's job to put a hole in. Let a Christian experience candidate for baptism. If you're here in the spirit of the Lord and speaking to your heart, this is a good day to trust the Lord with your heart. Hallelujah. There are people who've gone through this COVID thing and many people have died. There are some people who doctors said they wouldn't make it, but they're still here. We've got to believe God. We've got to trust God. If you're here in the spirit of the Lord and speaking to your heart, maybe you want to unite with the church. There may be someone over the Facebook. Say, Pastor, I wish I was there. If I was there, I'd join you. All you need to do is put it in the comments. We'll get in touch with you. And we'll see that the necessary things that you need to do will be done. What do I need to do? With the heart man believed unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Whosoever believeth upon him should not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. He's the same Lord. Of all, they call upon his name. I think so many times by Pastor Bill. Pastor Bill, Bill Jones said he got up one morning. And the scripture came to him. You should not die. You should live. same morning driving down Interstate 30 18 Willow coming head on toward him but he's still here God can give you that assurance even when your back seems to be up against the wall the important thing is to be able to hear what thus says the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We bless thee, O oh God. We thank you for this another day. We thank
thank you for your merciful kindness, your love that you have shown toward us. We know, God, that in the midst of even when people are trying to take us out, you are there. You are there. And we thank you. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for healing. We thank you for deliverance. Have thy way, O oh God. Have your way. Bless your holy name. love you indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we prepare to close the day, there may be someone, you know how we do our offering and <clears throat> we have to make sure we take care of offering. So, you know the way we do it, those on Facebook, if you want to look on Giblify, you can share through Giblify, those who are members who are not here, you know how you've been doing it. So we just bid you to do what God has put on your heart. Amen. I want to uh, I want to give a quick moment, a quick moment. Sister Debbie wants to just share uh, something with us, and uh, want you to. Uh, just take a moment and uh, hear uh, what she wants to share with us. Amen. I, I tell, tell them like I tell people at funerals. Uh, you got a couple of minutes. Two times a couple is four. Good morning, St. Mark. Good morning. <laughs> I have to get up and testify. I have to testify. I have to testify this morning. <clears throat> I was on the, 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 the live with Pastor Friday. But Thursday night, my sister Gwen had a bad night. And I was awake too. And I was like, well, I can't call her right now. I'm going to wake up everybody in the house. So I just got to move it around Friday morning. I said, well, let me call and check on Sister Gwen because uh, this ain't like her. Be up all night, you know. And I called her. And was talking, and I asked, I said, what's wrong? Is something wrong? You couldn't sleep last night. I said, I couldn't sleep because I was hurting. Why were you not sleeping, you know? So she shared some things with me. And I just started praying and asked God to guide whatever I'm supposed to tell her, let me tell her, you know. So when I got to talking to him, we was, I was telling her, you know, people in our lives for a season, but we got to keep going. We got to let that go and let God handle all this. And me and her was testifying with each other once. She said, God told me to let it go and let him. So I said, well, that's what we got to do. We got to let it go and let him. Let him do it, you know. So after we got off the phone and whatever and everything, I, I said, oh, I got time to catch pastor, you know. So we sitting there doing this and that and that. I couldn't. I stopped shaking. I had a feeling. This feeling was like I was lifted up. I was on a cloud. I wasn't even walking. I was just there. You know, it's just so light on me or whatever. And uh, it was everything that I had spoken to her came from him. And, and when Pastor was got to talk, Pastor got to talk, and all I can say, confirmation, confirmation. God said, do you hear me? I'm talking to you. But see, I, I never knew. God ain't no, never talk to me, this and that and that. I never knew how to listen. But I've learned how to listen, and I've learned how to let it go and let God. And once I did that, all this year, this year, these few weeks, God has been spoken and speaking to me, working through me, taking my mind. Now, that's not your problem. That's mine. That's my job. You go on and do your job. That's my job. And I start letting go, letting it go. I had to call Pastor. I cried because I never had a feeling like that before. And I know it wasn't nobody but God. And I told him it's a feeling and so I can't do nothing but say hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Because I know it wasn't nobody but God. It was a feeling that I said, it's time for me to work for him. I can't lead nobody to the cross if I can't get there myself. So I said, thank God. Thank God. Oh, Lord Jesus.
Jesus. I love you. Hallelujah. 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 He's walking. He showed me. I'm his, I'm his child. Hey, he's talking to me, Lord. Talking, talking. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen, amen, amen. Bless God Almighty. Thank all of you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Sister Debbie. We just bless God for his blessings, his greatness. God is a good God. Amen, amen. Just trust him, trust him, and obey. Amen. Uh, invite someone to come uh, next week with you. As I said, Reverend Howard, he's pastored here. And uh, let's just show him that uh, we appreciate him coming back to share with us uh, on next week. Amen? All right, all right. Well, I'm going to ask that we'll stand. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Thank you, God. Thank you for being a prayer hearing God. But not only a prayer hearing God, you're a prayer answering God. You did it before, and you'll do it again. And so, God, we just praise you. Thank you for each person in this house. Thank you for each family that's represented. Thank you for your word, God. And anywhere I may have failed today, God, we pray that you forgive us. You'll cleanse us. But continue to give us clarity that we might speak that which is pleasing and acceptable unto you. Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for each person in this house. Thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for Brother Joe, God. You've been with him. He's gone through some different things, but God, you've been good. Thank you for he and Cynthia. Thank you, God. Bless your holy name. Bless all that we have to pray for. Continue to lift up our friend Pastor Theodos Brown, who's been going through some physical ailments for about a month now. And we're praying, God, that you will move in a miraculous way. Everywhere we look, someone's going through something. But one thing is for sure if you allow us to go through, it's an indication that you're going to bring us out on the other side of it. So God, we praise you right now. Forgive us, cleanse us, wash us through. Use us, Lord, in your service. We pray for Sister Phyllis. We pray for those siblings. We pray for the entire family. God over God, thou bread Jehovah. As we pilgrim through this barren land, we're weak, God, but thou art mighty. Hold us with your power of prayer. In Jesus' name. To you that is able to keep us from falling, to present us spotless before the Father in heaven. Your love, your majesty, sweet communion, and your Holy Spirit. Rest, rule, and abide with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. And we'll all say it together.